Each one of you has a very unique story, untold narratives that's deeply embedded in our lives. It may be a memory of your mother singing a song, or your sibling's trick that got you into trouble, or a painful loss of a loved one. This is a photo of my mother when she was in high school. She was leading a singing competition in her class on her school picnic day. I would like to invite you just, just for a moment to trace back some of your memories in the past and draw up a dear memory of your own. As an artist, I use imagination to bring forth most private and held dear memories from my, my, my life. I talk about stories of loss, memory, and identity into a visual form. And in doing so, I hope to create spaces in which people can think and feel about things that they would not normally, like deep inside of things, past memories. When I was a young girl, I was an incredibly talkative and confident girl who did not miss a year being the class president. I dreamed of becoming a writer because I loved writing or teaching at a school as a literature teacher. In 1996, my parents decided to pack up our lives and move to the States to pursue the American dream. I was 13 years old then, and 13 is not a good age to move anywhere. <laughs> I strangely found myself in a world of loss and confusion, and I started to reading and studying the phonetics books to learn how to read another language. And lunchtime in the cafeteria, that time when you actually have to be social, was like the worst. I didn't know how to fit myself with the kids who looked different from me and who laughed at jokes that I just didn't understand for years. And in the midst of this transition, I found art. I had two wonderful art teachers in middle school, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Booth, who greeted me with the biggest hugs and whispered to me that I was like the best in the class. Such warmth and validation was perhaps what I needed the most at the time. And art classes became the safest place for me to actually explore my emotions with honesty and I started to once again slowly communicate with the world in a visual language. One day, my middle school art teacher sent my father down with me, and they told him that I should do art. He looked really perplexed, and he quietly nodded because he thought that I was gonna be a lawyer. A year later, I was in eighth grade, and I sent my parents down after dinner, and I told them that I was gonna be an artist. They quietly nodded again, and they never questioned my pursuit as an artist since. One of the most vivid memories that I have as a child is actually my grandmother's garden. It was filled with pears and grapes that I could reach and pluck and eat out of, and countless flowers that I could make a necklace out of. It was my fantastical world where I, I acted out my imagination. And over time, in front of my eyes, the garden started to lose its vibrant colors and started to die. No one explained to me what was going on, perhaps just because I was a kid, but I remember feeling so sad as a child. And this sense of traumatic loss, losing something that's really precious in your life, actually started to become a very strong theme in my artwork. This is a painting that I did in my undergrad school study years, the last painting that I did in oil. It's about as tall as I am and six feet wide, and it's called My Grandmother's Garden. With everything that I knew about drawing and painting at that time, I wanted to see if I could recreate and regain the garden that I loved as a child. And I wanted people to get a glimpse of beauty and mysteries of the memories that I had a child of that garden. During my graduate school years as a student, um, I was collecting a lot of things, including discarded silk flowers. My friend and I visited a cemetery, and while we were there, I found out that after a windy or rainy day, these silk flowers get plucked out and they all get thrown away. 
somehow immediately got felt connected with these materials, went to the office, got permission to collect these discarded cemetery flowers for a year and a half, and my studio started to fill up with these dusty but colorful flowers. And those flowers started to unfold a series of artworks that deal with the same idea of loss, memory, and identity. With these flowers in tow, I just walked around the city for hours, re-experiencing the loneliness and alienation. I sat on the floor for hours, just plucking the flowers apart, just being fascinated by the intricacy of these flowers, and to see once again if I could recreate the garden again. Around this time, one of my friend's mother passed away. And his words, that he could not let go of his mother's cremation jar, just would play in my head over and over again. I was driving, I was being in studios, you know, creating artwork, and that I just couldn't um, stop thinking about it. And I wondered, what if I actually hand cut these flower petals, they're essentially fabric, into ash-like powders. So I got the scissors, and I spent hours and hours on the floor once again, cutting, hand cutting them. I was spending a lot of hours in my studio at night times, that's because that's when I get inspired, and I was in need of a thick blanket. So I asked my mom, mom, do you have a thick blanket that I can borrow? And she hands me this. This is her wedding blanket. It's a tradition in Korea, uh, when a daughter gets married, the mother prepares a wedding blanket for the daughter as a gift. And the patterns that you see are traditional Korean patterns that actually wish for a good luck, pray for happiness. And yes, I did sleep on my mother's wedding blanket in my studio. And one day, it clicked that all the flowers that I was collecting at that time in my studio, the colors exactly matched with my mother's wedding blanket. And I wondered, what if I actually fused those two together? And this is the very first floor installation that I did, an exact replication of my mother's wedding blanket in its patterns, dimension, and colors. I hand shredded these flower petals and then carefully laid them down on the floor line by line. And I wanted to create, recreate in a sense, a symbolic wedding blanket that talks about the mysteries of marriage, intimacy, and also vulnerability. Imagine that these flowers are laid on the floor carefully with no adhesive or glue. So if you were to bring a fan over to the installation, that they will completely blown away and be destroyed. And this fragile nature of my installation actually speaks to vulnerability and ephemeral um, nature of, but yet the beautiful essence of mem memories in the past. This process of art making was incredibly revealing for me therefore very painful. And around this time, I actually fell into depression and started to see a counselor. I cried many nights cutting these flowers. Why is growing up so hard? And why is being a woman so hard? And why do I have so many issues? <laughs> and, <laughs> but I felt that destroying these flowers to recreate, reconstruct something new and beautiful out of it actually was starting to heal my wounds. My work has been so charged with tension, control, and vulnerability, and I started to feel this urgency and curiosity. What if I, as an artist, actually intervene and interrupt my own installation? Do I always have to be so controlling and so careful all the time? So what I did was I actually spread honey over my body and my face and imprinted those stripes onto my body as if I was trying to imagine physically what those stripes meant for my mother and what they actually mean for me. And the final product looked like this after 12 minutes rolling my body over the installation. This piece was incredibly important and freeing for me because as much as the personal, um, the, because the art making is so personal to me that I tried my best to control every single detail of that art um, project whenever that I was doing it. But this performance actually gave me um, this freedom. 
that it was okay for me to intervene, it, it was okay for me to interrupt, and it was okay for me to reinterpret and let that disruption become a new narrative. Whenever I have opportunities to share my work in public spaces, like Lenox Mall, um, I experience something so special. The challenge is then how do I bring something so personal and abstract into public space and to an audience with an assumption that they don't really care and that they may not even have any empathy, right, about my art or even my story. This project is called Spring Hiatus. Um, I was commissioned by Flux Projects in March 2011 to install an artwork in the middle of the mall, Lenox Mall. And talking about space between, it was like the prime space between Sephora's and Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> When executive directors approached me about doing an art project in the middle of the mall, I was so skeptical. Number one, I absolutely had no connection with Lenox Mall. That's where ladies go and buy expensive bags. And number two, there was no way that my fragile installation could survive in the middle of the mall. After a few conversations and site visits, I started to see what the executive directors saw putting art in the midst of everyday people's life. And by inserting something that's really beautiful and grand in its scale, I started to hope that perhaps my personal story will connect with people who were seeing my art. We spent three and a half months literally hand cutting these flowers with friends and family, including my parents. And we spent two weeks installing in the middle of the mall um, 40 by 16 feet, large, large floor filled with these saturated colors magnifying my, my, my mother's wedding blanket. And over about 100,000 people were able to witness the progress. This is a picture of my parents. By this time, it was their third time working with me on a project like this, and they were proficient in the process. <laughs> Best project assistance ever for free. So um, as they were doing this, they slowly actually opened up and they told me stories of their youth and their early marriage. So I got to know my parents in ways that I would not have otherwise. And also as an artist and as a daughter, I got to witness my parents symbolically recreating their wedding blanket and sharing the process with the American public. So many women told me stories of their mothers and their grandmothers. There's one French middle-aged woman who came over and she started to talk. And she told me stories of her growing up in France, watching her mother and grandmother making silk flowers for a living. And she was, you know, as we were talking, she was saying, oh man, I haven't thought about those memories for a while. And she was crying, and I was crying, and she was laughing, and I was laughing. During the days of installing, we were creating new memories, a new landscape inspired by the past. One day, my mother and I, after a long day of installing, we were driving home. And my mom says, you know, I'm like dead tired, but I'm really happy. I was like, driving what? <laughs> She's like a stoic Asian woman who doesn't really talk about her personal feelings. And I was just like, oh yeah, why? And she said, you get to share something so beautiful with so many people. And that really makes me happy. It meant the world to me that my own mother felt connected with my art making and got to experience this power of art. After this project, I got to visit Korea, my homeland that I hadn't been for almost 10 years. I was 28 years old, young woman then, and I had a lot on my mind. What if I won't be able to connect with my homeland again? Um, would my relatives and friends think that I have changed so much? And will I be accepted? All those worries went away when I went there. I went to my grandmother's monthly gathering with her friends, and I was so welcomed by their warmth, and, and the food was as delicious as I remembered. 
I was laughing at the same thing that they were laughing at and not sure if that's a good thing. <laughs> and nodding at the same thing that they are nodding at. And after all, I was, I was Korean. And this essence of me being a Korean woman wasn't going to go anywhere. This trip to Korea actually helped me to let go of this obsession with past memories, wanting to recreate something with my own definition, and actually started to really look into my interior landscape as a growing woman. This new piece is called In a Landscape Anew. As you can see, with the same hand-shredded flowers, the stripes are gone. And by using new form and new colors, I was actually then creating my own personal blanket and really conveying emotions honestly about what it means to be a growing woman. Art has incredible power to move and inspire people. Art has allowed me to really explore the space between the interior and exterior and navigate the space between two clashing cultures. And art also has allowed me to become a young woman, once again with sensitivity and confidence, and now with a voice. I want to take you back to the very first slide, my mother leading a class. Your own memory, the dear memory that you have. Each one of you have a very unique story a story that's not like anybody else's. And when you are willing to go back there just to, with a little bit of space and to open yourself up to share your story with vulnerability and authenticity, that your story will be as powerful and as inspirational. Thank you.